Hello there and welcome back. In this video I'm going to introduce you to the warnings module of Python and this warnings module comes uh, by default with the installation of the Python language and it's a very special and interesting module because it allows you to raise specific warning messages with their own matching classes. And uh, what you could do with this is that let's say you have an application and this application is part of the continuous integration, continuous delivery infrastructure. And you have a testing tier where you test this application. And um, on the testing tier, you may want to specify that you want to print every warning message that happens during the testing. And Afterwards, you could analyze these warning messages. So let me write a small script, which is going to fetch a URL. And um, it is going to take the URL from the command line argument. So if the length of the sysrd equals the 2, we assume that we have our program and our URL, and we unpack this sysrd. Otherwise, we would like to warn our user that you need to give me a URL as an argument. All right, so what we could do with this? We could say that if the HTTP is in the URL, we issue the following warning to our user. The connection is insecure. And afterwards, we would like to get the response from the request module and the get function from the specified URL. Let's save it. And now, if I run this script, you can see the following. So I get my warning because we run into the else branch and it states that you need to give me a new URL as an argument. So let's give it a URL. HTTP google.com. As you can see, we have not run into the else branch, but we proceeded further with the specified URL and it states that the connection is insecure. So these uh, warning messages have, let's say, uh, unique behavior based on the specified filters. As you may be already aware, I have listed here the filters which can be specified. So the basic uh, behavior is that we print each and every warning with the specific line number and stack trace and so on as we, uh, let's say, handle them in our script or application. The second behavior that we can specify is that we would like to turn these warnings into exceptions. And if you turn it into an exception, it is going to halt the execution or you could be build a logic around these exceptions, so it can handle it. We could always ignore them. We could specify the always, which is going to print the matching warnings, and we could specify the module or the once. The once is interesting because, let's say, I specify the filter as once, and if I have the same warning happening, the, only the first occurrence is going to be printed. And by default, these warnings are special because they have a so-called warning class. And uh, <clears throat> what you could do is to say that if you are importing a module into your script and uh, you would like to notify the user that the import was not successful for whatever reason because the module is installed or not the proper version is installed 
what you could do is to raise this import warning. And let's see this one. So <sighs> the warnings. And as you can see, this is the function that we have used. What we could also do is if we messed up everything and we don't know what where our head is, we could reset these warnings and it will set the, back the default state as to how the module interacts when a warning is issued. We could also specify a so-called simple filter and this simple filter would filter the specific warning messages as they occur based on their let's say behavior and settings. We could specify filters and filter warnings and so on. So let's uh, specify the filter warnings and we specify them once. So now if I go here and raise the same warning what I could see is that only one warning is printed. There you go. So it's on the line seven things. And since the same warning happened later in the script during the execution, it is not re-raised or uh, reissued. And um, we could convert it very easily to error. So basically, if I state this, you can see the very similar error stack trace and um, <coughs> let me prove to you why the execution is stopped. So this gets printed. If we are on the error settings, you can see that that print message never happens. If I change it to the default behavior, you can see that this gets printed, and before that, the two warning messages are also issued. And uh, if we want, what you could say is that the category of this is future warning. This is a, let's say, exception class or warning class. And now, if the behavior is set to once, we will see both of these warning messages occur. And the reason for that is that the first one we issue is a future warning class based. And the second one, since we did not specify any classes, it is the user warning class. But if I say I want this to be doubled, you will see that this doesn't change a thing. So, well, basically, this is all I wanted to show you about this module. I think this should and might give you a pretty good idea as to how you can handle warnings in a different way. You can integrate this module with the logins module. So if you want, you could say, that the logins module is going to catch all these warnings and push them out to the specified uh, log file. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching.